So you decided to start learning Japanese, huh? What is wrong with you? It's difficult. Anyway, a good place to start is verbs. Uh, learning to conjugate verbs is a uh, big part of the whole beginner phase. Uh, I felt so anyway. And um, yeah, that's where we're gonna start. I'm gonna tell you what I know about verbs. And um, yeah, uh, let's start with the most basic of all things. All Japanese verbs end with U. Now, how to split these up into groups then? The grouping that I saw when I went to weekend classes is that there are three groups. Group 1 has most of them. Group 2 has uh, the simple ones that end in RU, like TABERU and AKERU, and those that just take, uh, drop the RU and then add your conjugation. And Group 3 is KURU and SURU, the irregular ones. Uh, this grouping is fine, but I use four groups. Uh, I just found that easier. And I'm going to teach you the way I learned. So I basically split group one into two parts. Group one is, like they said, most of them. But uh, I call these something u verbs. They can end in ku, su, mu, bu, gu, su, or nu. Okay? That, that's an u at the end, but there, there's some other consonant first. The second group, which I split off from group one, is the u verbs. That's words like au, where it's a single uh, hiragana u on its own. They are slightly different uh, to conjugate, although it's mostly with, uh, that I can think of right now, the, the specialness is pretty much limited to mas and nai. But still, I think they're different enough to, be war to warrant putting it into a separate group. It's, I think it's easier to think of it that way. Uh, then group three would be the standard ru verbs, although I would really love if they would, could be in group one, because I, f I feel that they're the most basic. Compared to the others, there's not, there's not that many of them. I feel like they should be, you should learn that first, but maybe I'm wrong. And then group four is uh, irregular verbs. Kuru, suru, and also aru, uh, possibly iru. Uh, kuru and suru, everyone thinks that's irregular, but some people forget that aru is also irregular. But yeah, more on that later. So yeah, that's the grouping. So yeah, in, in my brain, group one is this, the regular ru verbs. Group two is something u verbs. Group three is u verbs. And group four is irregular verbs. All right. That's my personal uh, preference. Now, group one is the easiest one. You just remove ru and add your conjugation, add your uh, suffixes or whatever that's called. Uh, by the way, when you have when you've dropped the ru, everything with Japanese verbs, everything but the ru or the ku, mu, su, etc., or the u, everything before that, it's called a stem. Uh, all the conjugations is added to the stem. The stem never, ever, ever, ever changes. So taberu is always and it's tabe something something, but tabe never ever changes. That's also kind of good to know. One is easiest. Just remove the ru and add whatever conjugation you want to have. Uh, group two is the most difficult one, which uh, you have to remember. You take the next to last consonant and add whatever the conjugation is. You just, the u always goes away, but then you have to conjugate it into something else because in Japanese, you know, you don't deal with regular just standalone consonants like you do in uh, other languages, like uh, ru, and then it becomes ri for mas. Uh, now we're just talking mas, so ku, ki, shi, mi, bi, gi, chi. Oh yeah, tsu becomes chi, not well, whatever else. Group 3, the U verbs, is pretty much, I mean, it is very similar to group, the other one, which is, you know, why it's put together, but I think it's slightly different. And the difference is, as I said, really, it's basically mas, nai, and also past tense, maybe. Because the the U transforms into an E, and then you add, add mas. That's the that one. And to the U transforms into a wa before you add nai for negative. And then past one is ta. Group four, the irregulars, is special. So suru, it's conjugated as if it was su. If you think of uh, su from hanasu and how that becomes hanashita, then suru is the same as the su at the end of han hanasu, because suru becomes shita and shite and shimas and shimashita, etc. Otherwise, it's uh, pretty sim uh, easy. The the exception is the potential form. I'll get into the various forms soon. But the potential form, instead of becoming seru or something, it becomes a different, completely new word, dekiru, which I'm sure you've heard of. And that one, in turn, is uh, conjugated as if it was a regular 
group one ru verb. It's dekiru, dekimas, dekimashita, dekta, dekte, etc. Kuru is kind of like if it was if it was just a ku, how it becomes kimas and kita, not kita, but kita, and then kite, not kite. So that's yeah, irregular. Otherwise, it's uh, changed to ko, like konai, koreru, kosaseru, koyo, and koi for imperative. And I also add aru to this because it's pretty much a something u verb uh, generally because it's uh, arimas and it's atte as a regular ru verb would be. But it's not aranai, it's nai. The a disappears, which is what makes it a special, a special unicorn verb. Um, besides all the Japanese verbs that are taberu, hashiru, uh, shinu, and whatever they are, there's also a shitload that are, that are uh, a word plus suru. And these are all taken from Chinese originally. So they take a Chinese verb and then add suru. Like uh, benkyo, obviously. It's not benkyo and then you conjugate that somehow. It's benkyo suru. So if you know how to... You should really uh, learn to conjugate suru as fast as possible. Because, you know, and you, you kind of do it automatically. You know, benkyo shimas, benkyo shimashita, benkyo shite kudasai, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, suru is... Once you know suru, you have a gateway to many verbs, some considered to be unnatural. Anyway, now, um, let's go have a look at the table, shall we? Alright, so let's start with the standard ru verbs. Now, with all of these, I've taken my sort of go-to example verb. And I won't list off a bunch of other uh, examples, because I'd have to think about them, and it takes, takes a while, so that'll just be, just be annoying, but... for me. But yeah, uh, okay. Uh, the standard go-to ru verb is taberu. I always use that one whenever I'm thinking of any kind of example. So the the first form, which is called, I don't know if it's called it in English, but in Swedish it's called like infinitive form or something. That's I've, in English I've always heard it referred to as dictionary form. It's you know plain taberu, and that's not used too much, uh, but it's used for present and also for the future actually. Because you have uh, to make, like, I'm going to do something, you have to add stuff like tsumori, taberu tsumori desu, like I'm going to eat and that kind of thing. But if you just say, hai tabemasu, that means you're gonna do it very soon or right now. So it's still kind of future-y, but uh, yeah, that's beside the point. The polite one, tabemasu. So as you see, ru goes away, mas comes in, and that's what Osaka Seafood Concern is all about. <laughs> For polite negative, it's tabemasen. And then polite past, tabemashita. Polite past, negative, tabemasen deshita. So then we have eat, don't eat, not eat or don't eat. Uh, that's not a suggestion, it's like just negative. Yeah. Ate and didn't eat. So these are all very, you know, simple. And then uh, negative, it's tabenai. Ru goes away, nai comes in. Past, it's ta, tabeta. It's always ta. Past negative, or I didn't do, first tabenai, and then e goes away, and kata comes in, so it's tabenakata. That's I, I didn't eat. Then we have te form, and te is doesn't really mean anything by itself. It has to. It depends on how it's used. It's not the size. It's how you use it. <laughs> it's not the size of your te form. You can you can add iru afterwards to say that you're doing something right now or it's something that's in the process of being done. That can be a process that's not just right now, but it can you know, take a time. It can f for, uh, function as a kind of and thing, like watashi wa sushi o tabete sugaku o shimasu or something. I can't think of a good example, but yeah, I am eating sushi and doing math. That kind of thing. And then the te becomes a kind of an and thing but yeah this is not about the um, intricacies of the te form but this is just to say that tab uh, regular ru verbs just ru becomes te very simple not nothing more to think about now we come to the little more special ones passive form then ru becomes rare ru and uh, let's also at the same time bring up potential and that's also tabe rare ru and then causative, which is tabesaseru. Now, what are these? Well, passive form is when something's being done to something else. And potential is just able to do something. 
私は食べられる。I can eat or I'm able to eat. Passive form is more like 寿司が食べられた。So the sushi was eaten. Causative is to allow or let someone do something. So 食べさせた is I was allowed to eat. Now all of these, what is good with these, and it goes for all the other verbs also in all the other groups, is that whenever you conjugate something to passive potential or causative, It's, it doesn't matter where they came from, it always turns into a standard root verb. If you con- conjugate into passive potential or causative, the end of the root there always becomes a regular root, drop root, add, mas, or masen. So that's good to know, I think. So you don't have to worry like, oh, where did it come from? Then, then it should be like this. And、uh, there's no like double conjugation. Next one is hypothetical. And that one is if. Uh, Ru goes away, reba comes in. So, tabe reba, if I eat. And then we have volitional. And that's、uh, pretty much uh, let's. Uh, let's get out to vote, let's make our voices heard. We've been given the right to choose between the douche and the turd. So, then you drop the ru, you add yo. Tabe yo. And alternatively, here I should also mention that、uh, this goes for、uh, must forms also. So, Instead of mas, it's masho. Tabe masho. And that's yeah, let's eat. And finally, it's imperative, which is an order form. So then、uh, there's actually two k i n d of orders、uh, going on, but the, the, the one that's relevant to conjugation is tabe ro. So ru becomes ro. Simple. You can stretch that vowel in you know, speech, like tabe ro, like that thing, but it's really the, the proper conjugation is just tabe ro. But the second one is tabe nasai. Which is something that a,、uh, like a parent says to a child. Like, and nasai is not really,、uh, I thought that was a little more like a could you please eat, but no, that's actually more like an order. But imperative form, when it comes to conjugation, that's tabero. Okay? All right, now we get into the something u verbs. Now, here instead of going through uh, each uh, kind of、uh, conjugation at a time, I'm just going to go through uh, all of the various something u verbs except for regular u. Before I go over to the next kind of conjugation.、Uh, although、I'll, the first couple are so simple that it much explaining, but I'll explain now. Anyway, the something ru verbs are ru, ku, su, mu, bu, gu, tsu, and nu. And the, my examples, the, my go tos for this is hashiru to run, aruku to walk, hanasu to speak. Yomu to read, asobu to play, oyogu to swim, matsu to wait, and shinu to die. Welcome to die!、Uh, the, th- uh, the reason though why shinu is my go to for new verbs is that that's the only v- new verb. <laughs> I can't think of anyone el- any else anyway. There is only one new verb as far as I know. Words can end with new, however, but that's not a. If you ever see that again, that it's not a verb, it's a, it's a, a type of ni form. But that's、uh, something for a separate、uh, video, maybe. Anyway, so yeah, dictionary form, I already mentioned that. Oh, yeah. Now, the thing with the something u verbs is that the way you conjugate them, some of these kinds of conjugations, I forget what the titles are for those, follow, basically think back to hira- the hiragana table with the, the five vowels, a, i, u, e, o, right? All of those five are used、uh, in some of these cases. And with the must form, we come into the first one, it's the e. So that means that first you have to conjugate the something u hiragana into the e form of that hiragana before adding your conjugation. So hashiru, then you have to make the ru into an e version, and that's hashiri, right? So then add mas, and then hashirimas. And the same for the rest arukimas, hanashimas, yomimas, asobimas, oyogimas, machimas, and shinimas. Tsu becomes chi, by the way. And then the rest three polite negative, polite past, and polite, polite past negative are very simple. So I'll just, you know, it's basically it's exactly as before. It's masen, mashta, masen, deshta. You just have to remember that you、uh, conjugate the ru to, to the e form first. So hashiri masen, hashiri mashta, hashiri masen, deshta, aruki masen, aruki mashta, aruki masen, deshta, etc., etc. I'm not going to go into more, I'm not going <laughs> to say them all because that just、uh, eats up time. Now, the negative form, it still ends up with nai. They all do that. However, with this, because you can't just drop the,、uh, the last hiragana and change it, 
this time you have to conjugate to the A form. So Hashiru becomes Hashira and then Nai. Hashira Nai. Aruku becomes Arukanai. Hanasu becomes Hanasanai. Yomu becomes Yomanai. Asobanai. Oyoganai. Matanai. Shinanai. Okay? Past form. Then we get into some weird stuff. With past and te, things get a little weird in this uh, big uh, verb group. Here you have to kind of memorize a little bit. So first you have the ru verbs with hashiru as my example. They become ta at the end. So hashiru becomes hashitta. Aruku, uh, the ku ones, they change to ita. Not itta, but ita. Aruita. Su is just kind of like suru, so it's hanashita. That's, those ones I always thought, thought were pretty easy. Yomu becomes yonda, not yomada or yomata or something, but yonda. Bu and mu are kind of the same, so how it was yonda, it's also a sonda. Gu, that becomes ida, kind of like uh, how ku became ita, here is ida. So oyoida, that means I swam. Tsu, that becomes ta, so matta. Shinu is also like mu and bu, which becomes nda, so shinda. Past negative, that's exactly like the, uh, like taberu, except for the, you know, the a conjugation. But it's nai, take away the e, add kata. So that's really simple. Uh, I won't go through all that saying it. Now te form. Uh, te form is also weird, but it's, luckily, it follows the same rules as the past one. So they're at least the same. There's nothing, you know, standing out between those. But they're, they're both, you know, stands out from everything else. So hash hashiru becomes hashitte, aruku becomes aruite, hanasu is hanashite, yomu is yonde, asobu is asonde, oyogu is oyoide, matsu is matte, and shinu is shinde. By the way, I can throw in here when you have the uh, you know the kudasai when you ask someone to do something uh, in the regular um, please do something. You just take the te form and then add kudasai. But if you, you ask someone to not do something, it's nai form and then de kudasai. And that's always uh, the, the case. So it's tabenai de kudasai, hashiranai de kudasai, arukanai de kudasai, etc. And then now we go into the uh, strange ones, so to speak. Passive form uh, is similar to the regular ru verbs, especially with the something u version of ru, like hashiru. It's, hashiru becomes hashiraderu. However, that doesn't mean that hashiru in passive form just drops ru and add ra adds raderu like taberu did. That means that hashiru uh, conjugates to a form, like just like nai, and then reru. So really think of it as reru is the conjugation that's being added, and the actual changing is something u, you know, ruku, whatever, changes into a form, just like nai, so, and then reru, okay? So hashiru is hashiraderu, aruku is arukareru. Hanasu is hanasareru, yomu is yomareru, asobu is asobareru, oyogareru, matareru, shinareru. Although I'm not sure shinareru is ever used anywhere. Maybe it could just be me not having heard, ever heard it before, but still. So change to a form and then add reru for these. Now potential form, they change here. We have to change the last hiragana into e form. And then just add ru. So it's really pretty simple. Hashiru is hashireru. Aruku, arukeru. Hanaseru. Yomeru. Asoberu. Oyogeru. Materu. And shineru. Causative form, to let someone do something. It's pretty much the same as the passive form, except instead of adding reru, you add seru. Hashiraseru. Arukaseru. Hanasaseru. Yomaseru. Asobaseru. Oyogaseru. Mataseru and shinaseru. Okay, hypothetical form, aka uh, if. It's the same as the potential form in the way that the last uh, hiragana has to change into an e form, and then you just add ba. Hashiru, hashireru, hashireba. That's the kind of order you could think of it as. So hashireba, arukeba, hanaseba, yomaseba, asobeba, oyogeba, mateba, and shineba. Shineba I have heard. I think I've heard that in Japanese bullying, they use it as like shinebai. Like if you die, that would be good. So this is kind of like you should die. 
So yeah, don't use that if you should be nice to each other. <laughs> uh, volitional form is a little bit, it still goes to the all, but it's a little different than the regular tab tabular because you don't just add your, you have to change it into an all. So here uh, you change the ending hiragana into o form and then just add another u to, to make it kind of longer. So hashiru, hashiro, hashiro, aruko, hanaso, yomo, asobo, oyogo, mato, and shino. Even though I've never heard of shino, like let's die. <laughs> kind of weird. And the uh, imperative form is pretty much the same as the regular ru verb, but instead of changing to o form, it changes to e form. So instead of hashiru being hashiro, it's hashire, aruke, hanase, yome, asobe, oyoge, mate, and shine. This I've definitely heard. <laughs> shine! Now, let's talk about the u verbs and the small differences there. Uh, my go-to is always au, for, to meet. First, with polite, regular mas, you have to uh, change the u to an i, and then mas. So, au, ai mas. Then it's like you would expect. Ai masen, ai mashta, ai masen deshta. Nai form, then that's the second special one where you have to change the u into a wa before adding nai. So, au becomes awa nai. And past form is ta, just like the something u ru, like hashiru is hashitta, au is atta. So, in that way, it's, it's similar. Past negative is awana kata. So it's nai form and then drop e add kata same as everyone else. Te form is atte. Passive is pretty much uh, the same as it's the same thinking as the other ones where you just change to a form and then add reru. But here because u can change into an, to an a, you have to do it like you did with a nai and awa. So awa reru. Potential, it's again you change to the e, but here it's not like aweru or something. So it's instead it just you just change u to e, so aeru, and back to the the the, the former kind of thinking to uh, causative awaseru, and then back to form, former that again for hypothetical it's aeba. Volitional, it's replace u with o, ao, and then imperative is ae. All right, suru. Suru, shimas, shimasen, shimashita, shimasen deshita, shinai, shita, shinakatta, shite, and then passive, sareru, potential, dekiru, causative, saseru, hypothetical, sureba, not sareba or something, so sureba, that's what's a little different. Volitional is shio, and imperative is shiro, which also happens to be the color white. Kuru is kimas, kimasen, kimashita, kimasen deshita, Konai, kita, konakatta, kite, korareru, korareru, koraseru, koreba, koyo, and koi. Koi is definitely um, uh, completely different because all the other ones change to either o or e. This one changes, changes to i. Aru, to exist, of course, is arimas, arimasen, arimashita, arimasen deshita, but it's not anai, as I said, it's nai, just nai. That also means uh, to jump forward that it's nakatta, and then the past form was atta, te is atte. With aru, I don't think that passive potential causative hypothetical volitional or imperative uh, exist at all. I don't think they exist because you can't say let's exist <laughs> or or uh, order someone to exist. I don't think so. Same with iru, iru imas imasen imashita imasen deshita inai ita inakatta and ite. Which is pretty much as if it was a regular ru verb, so it's, I'm not entirely sure why I put that in irregular, but I did. Might be because it didn't have those other conjugations. Now, that's a lot, but find a verb conjugation table, print it out or, or something. It's a very good idea to memorize it. Um, it's very good to, to know. Anyway, I need to mention one specific uh, exception. The super common verb iku. I don't put that as an irregular one, even though it has an irregularity. I just put it in where it's supposed to be, like in a something u verb. It's just, I put a little asterisk in my mind that this has an exception. According to the rule, iku is a ku ending verb, right? So it should be ite. The ku should be in, become ite, so it's ite. But that's not the case, it's ite. And then uh, with the, that's the same with the past, it's ita instead of ita. Otherwise, it's the same. It's ikanai and uh, ikeru and that kind of stuff. Well, I guess that's kind of it.
but yeah this um, it seems uh, daunting but it's very good to learn and uh, it's great to learn because knowledge is power please benkyo shinasai and uh, yeah thank you for listening goodbye